Hello again, I'm Alison and I work at Walthamstow Wetlands for the London Wildlife Trust. Today I'm here to talk about bats and to tell you it's not all about blood-sucking vampires. In fact, only three species of bat feed on blood out of the 1,400 species of bat that exist across the world. 1,400 different types of bat, that's loads. It makes them the second most common mammal and it means that one in every five mammals is actually a bat. We have 18 different species of bat in Britain and before you ask, none of them are the blood-sucking type. They're all nocturnal, so they fly at night to forage for their food. A pipistrel bat, which weighs about the same as a one pound coin and is the same size as your thumb, can forage for 3,000 insects a night. So that's mosquitoes, spiders, flies and moths. Bats are the only mammal that are capable of controlled flight. This means they don't just jump out of a tree and glide. In fact, they are awesome flyers. Birds flap their wings together, but bats can move their wings independently and even change the shape of their wings as they're flying. This makes them more manoeuvrable than birds. They can even pluck a spider off a web in the dark without getting stuck. They use echolocation. It's the bat's super sense. Some other animals use echolocation too. Whales, dolphins, and the cave-dwelling swiftlet, but bats do it best. Echolocation is like seeing with sound. The bats produce a chirrup sound, which is at a too high frequency for us to hear. This is called ultrasound. The sound wave, or chirrup, bounces off all the surrounding objects, so the trees, the buildings, the water, and it comes back to the bat's ears. The bat then uses this to build up a picture of its surroundings. So, bats will use their echolocation to help them navigate through the air so that they avoid hitting anything, but they also use it to hunt. So they can work out the prey's size, its texture, distance, speed, and even the direction it's traveling in. Bats have developed unusual facial features to help them with their echolocation. Some have extra large ears like our long-eared bats to help them receive sound. Others have big lips like a megaphone to project their chirrup further. Some have a funny shaped nose so the chirrup can be sent out in a specific direction. Bats aren't blind, in fact some have really good eyesight, but echolocating bats use their other amazing senses more. Bats truly are magnificent hunters, and with all those special features, the insects don't stand a chance. Or do they? Some insects have developed cunning defences against the bats. Moths, for example, have ears on the side of their bodies. This way they can detect the echolocation and move out of the way at the last second to avoid being eaten. Some moths, such as the hawk moths, shake their bottoms. This sends out a signal which confuses the bat. They basically jam their echolocation. Two scientists, David Griffin and Robert Galambos, discovered echolocation in 1944. They'd been studying bats for six years and found if they covered bats' eyes, they could still navigate. However, if they put tiny earplugs in their ears and covered their mouth, they kept bumping into things. We can study and enjoy bats today by joining a Wildlife Trust guided bat walk. We use bat detectors. So this brings down the ultrasonic chirrup noise to a level that we can all hear. Each bat has its own unique call which the bat detector picks up. This means you can hear and see them feeding right above your head. Oh, one last thing. Do you know why bats hang upside down? Well, they're not like birds. They can't take off from the ground. Their leg back legs are not designed that way. They can't run along the ground to take off and their wings are just not strong enough to give them the lift. So instead, they use their front claws and climb to a high point and simply drop and fly. So when they're in their roost and the sun sets, they're ready to go. That's it for me and bats. I hope to see you on a bat walk soon. Bye.